Hi, good morning everybody. So, uh, today uh, we are going to talk about uh, fast reactions, uh, techniques for studying uh, fast reactions. So, let us see uh, again the outline that we have talked about reaction rates, rate laws, effect of temperature on reaction rate, complex reactions, theories of reaction rate, kinetics of some specific reactions, kinetics of catalyzed reactions. So, now uh, today we will talk about uh, fast reactions. Now, uh, as we all know that chemical kinetics affects everyday life, determines how fast in insects work, how quickly plants and animals grow, even how fast their hair grows, I mean uh, how, how fast hair grows on your head that 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 is also you know a part of your uh, this chemical kinetics. Very important in chemical process that is selectivity and activity of chemical reactions determines how well chemical processes work. Anyway, so uh, uh, reactions can be very slow reaction it can be moderately fast or it may be very fast. Okay. So, uh, slow reactions are easy to you know follow that is maybe with time you can follow the concentration of you know some reactant or maybe some product. Okay. Suppose, one reactant is uh, depleted. So, you can you can find out the concentration if, if it is depleted slowly. Okay, but if it if it is depleted slowly, then suppose taking first reading, and whenever you whenever you are ready to take the second reading, by that time gap, if it is completely depleted, or maybe even before the start of your measurement, if all the reactants are depleted, all the reactants are consumed, then it is difficult. You know, it is you know by by conventional method you cannot you cannot find out the I mean you cannot follow the chemical reaction. Okay? I mean in terms of kinetics you cannot follow the kinetics. So, there are a wide range of techniques available to study fast kinetics that is the thing is that the reaction happens in a very short period of time. In conventional titrometric method suppose you suppose consider that the reaction uh, of ester that is hydrolysis of ester by acids or maybe by alkali. So, what you do? You take some ester in a conical flask say it methyl acetate or maybe ethyl acetate you take in a conical flask. Then what you do? You add your, your uh, uh, that is reagent I mean your acid or base that that may be your catalyst or maybe in in other, other way you can you can take your acid or base in your conical flask and then half discharge take no, note down the half discharge of your ester okay and then what you do after it is mixed thoroughly that is the 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 moment the half discharge time is noted that is your zero time so then you swirl the reaction mixture so that your reactants that is acid or alkali and your ester is mixed thoroughly and then maybe you wait uh, say for 4 to 5 minutes take out some def definite amount of aliquot maybe 5 ml and then you discharge that 5 ml aliquot into a ice cold water to arrest the reaction and then you titrate with uh, I mean it, it is basically an acid based titration with an appropriate indicator. But the thing is that uh, between 0 and 5 minutes if all the reactants are depleted that is if most I mean say uh, 90 percent of the reactant concentration is depleted then what will you do? You will be getting only one point I mean one point on your graph, graph paper. So, that is not sufficient to you know follow the kinetics. So, that is the real problem if the if your reaction is very fast. Okay. So, in a moment everything is you know completed all the reaction is completed. So, it is difficult using uh, the very conventional method 
to, to follow the chemical kinetics of the first reaction. So, in this case you know uh, a number of techniques are available like flow techniques. These are typically used to study reactions occurring on time scales of seconds to milliseconds. Milliseconds means 10 to the power minus uh, 3 second. Okay. So, uh, that is 10 to the power minus 3 means 1 by 10 to the power 3 second that is 1000 part. Okay. One part that is if you divide your 1 second into 1000 parts then maybe 1 part will be your 1 millisecond. Okay. So, in the simplest flow method reactants are mixed at one end of flow tube here one end of flow tube and the composition of the reaction mixture is monitored at one or more positions that is here you know the reaction mixture is flown this way. So, here you can monitor the composition of your mixture by a movable detector. Okay. So, that is monitored that is composition of the reaction mixture is monitored at one or more positions along the tube by any suitable you know detection method. Okay. So, so you mix over here say this is your reactant 1, this is your reactant 2, this is an injection method. So, you inject into this reaction vessel okay, and then you allow you, you continuously you know add your you know continuously inject your reaction I mean reactants into this chamber and it is allowed I mean the reaction mixture is allowed to flow through this tube and you detect by a suitable method the the, the composition of the reaction mixture. Now, if the flow velocity along the tube is known, measurements at a different position provides the information on the concentration at different times after the initiation of the reaction. Okay. So, the moment you mix this is your initi initiation of the reaction and then it is you know it is it is it is uh, it is flowing through. Okay. So, flowing through this tube and then uh, you measure. So, that means, if this flow rate is known, then you should be able to find out find out the time dependent concentration okay, along this along this tube. That is the time dependent concentration of certain reactant or maybe certain product. Okay. So, this is one way. So, in this case your detector is movable. In other case, the injector can be movable. That is, your detector is fixed, and the injector can be movable. It 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 may be moved from maybe this position to this position. Okay, so so in the second method, this detector may be in a fixed position, but moving injector can be used to inject one or more reactants into flow tube at different positions relative to the detector to study the time dependence of the reaction composition. So, there 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 could be I mean you, you can have two ways in one case your detector is mobile and in the other case your your one of the injectors or maybe both can be moved. Okay. So, this way you can you know uh, you can find out the time dependent concentration. So, that is the that is the goal of you know studying I mean to, to know the kinetics you should know the time dependent concentration of certain re certain reactant or maybe product okay so it is a continuous flow method i just talked about so continuous flow methods have the disadvantage that relatively large quantities of reactants are needed okay and very high flow velocities are required in order to study fast reactions. For fast reactions, since it is occurring very fast, so so to 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 compete with that speed, you should you should pass your reaction mixture very fast through your flow tube. Okay, so that's uh, a difficulty, you know. That's a difficulty. So that's why I know. 
another modified modified version of this uh, flow method has been devised. So, it is called another uh, method which is called the stopped flow method. In this method a fixed volume of reactants are rapidly injected into a reaction chamber and it is mixed by a syringe fitted with okay, uh, at the at the at end stop. Okay. So, what is happening that here it is it is fitted this syringe is fitted it is movable maybe. So, so it is stopped flow has been stopped at this point and now what is happening you are injecting so slowly slowly it is going out this syringe is going out. So, you are injecting that is injecting this way and this syringe is going out. So, your inject injectors here and here these two are pushed in and it is pushed out. Okay. So, the composition of the reaction mixture is monitored here by the help of a detector spectroscopically as a function of time after mixing at a fixed position in the chamber that is may be here at a fixed position. This can be designed to allow measurement on very small sample volumes making the stopped flow method very useful for studying the biochemical kinetics as for example, enzyme kinetics or enzyme reactions. <coughs> so, in previous method I mean flow method it is continuously flown out this mixture, but here you see that there is a syringe which is stopping the flow and slowly it is coming out as your reactant syringes are pushed in. Okay, so, it is a modified version and, <coughs> and it requires lesser volume of your reactant. So, it is, it is now widely used to study biochemical kinetics the reactions which are occurring very fast. Okay very fast reactions can be can be you know followed not only biochemical reactions may be other reactions as well can can be you know studied with uh, using this stopped flow method okay so it is so these two methods are dependent on the i mean is based on the flow technique Next is another method <coughs> which I will uh, discuss maybe in a later part of our talk uh, our talk maybe in the next talk in in details, but here we are just I am just trying to give give you the idea of of another technique for studying the fast reactions it is flash photolysis. I guess all of you have seen flash of light whenever you use a camera okay, to shoot I mean uh, some photograph. Okay. So, the moment you click the moment you click it flashes depending on whether you are using flash or not maybe not in daytime, but maybe maybe when the daylight is less or maybe uh, in the night time you you have to use a flash otherwise your objects are not visible that is why you have to have you you, you, you generate you know you generate uh, some light source I mean you, you use some light so that so that your objects are visible it is an artificial way of lighting the your your objects. So, you click flashes okay. so that is that is called a flash. Now, this flash can initiate a chemical reaction okay. maybe some photochemical reaction can be can be initiated with this the reactions which are you know very much dependent on the on, on the amount of photon that is falling on, on, on the reaction mixture. Okay. So, flash so this flash is used and depending on the duration of the flash if it is very fast that is clicks and then it goes maybe or maybe sometime it remains say for some period of time maybe several milliseconds it can it can it can stay. Okay. So, depending on the on, on, on the stay time of this flash whether it is long flash or it is a short flash you can study different different reactions I mean reactions of 
differ in fastness or maybe different differing in slowness. Okay. So, reaction in this case the reaction is initiated by a pulse of light, so it is called a flash like, like your flash of your uh, used in photography. Okay. So, that dissociates a suitable precursor molecule in the reaction mixture producing re, uh, reactive species for initiating the reaction. The concentration of the reactive species is monitored as a function of time spectroscopically okay, because spectroscopic methods are you know detection detector detectors used in spectroscopic methods can be fast. Okay, they can detect I mean these detectors can detect your signal very fast that is its time resolution is high compared to other other uh, other things. So, optical detectors are very useful in this case. So, that is why spectroscopic detection methods are used here. Okay. So, maybe it is using by using absorption spectroscopy that is absorbance as a function of time or maybe fluorescence spectroscopy that is in that case we monitor the fluorescence intensity as a function of time. So, fluorescence is basically you know getting up some photons out of some process, maybe it is a physical process or maybe it is a chemical process. Chemical process may be uh, a chemiluminescence, physical process is simply you know phosphorescence or fluorescence. So, net thing is that you are getting some photons and you are just measuring the photon intensity, I mean number of photons crossing per unit area. Okay. So, you are measuring intensity as a function of time. Okay. So, with the help of a photo detector, maybe photo multiplier tube, maybe photo diode. So, these two you know um, use the simple concept of photoelectric effect okay. that when photons are, are falling on some, some you know um, some surface additional you know I mean secondary electrons are generated. So, that electrons are you know detected and a current is induced in the circuit. So, that is you know related to the I mean that is corroborated with you know related to your your amount of fluorescence that you are getting. So, there is a one to one correspondence okay, between amount of photons generated okay, and the, the the current you are you are getting in this in the in the electrical circuit. Okay. So, uh, maybe spectroscopy or I mean uh, absorption spectroscopy or maybe fluorescence technique. The shortest time scale in which the reaction can be studied using this technique okay, is determined by the duration of the flash or time width of the pulse. Okay. So, the thing is that uh, in earlier days when, when uh, manual photography uh, has been used in that case what is happening that if your your flash is not synchronized is not synchronized with your shutter then maybe your photograph could look like that it is it is half illuminated and half dark because of the fact that the time for which this shutter was open okay is much you know uh, it is happening that is this shutter is doing like this it is moving and then coming back. So, maybe the the time for which the shutter was half open open during that time there may be the flash was on and the remaining portion when the shutter was was just closing that time the shutter I mean the light was off. So, what is happen, what has happened is that that during half shutter the light was on means half portion of your photograph is illuminated and half is not illuminated. So, that is why you know your shutter speed and your flash duration is very important that is synchronization is very important. Okay. So, that means it is the width of your flash that determines your 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 ability your ability to you know follow a particular reaction or not okay. whether you will be able to follow a first reaction or you would not be able to follow the first reaction. Okay. So, that is why you know flash time is important. So, the flash it is determined by the by the 
duration of the flash or maybe full width half maximum that is the time duration if you plot the intensity as a function of time like this. Say this is your intensity, your time. So, your flash could be like this, it could be like this, that is it is on then remaining steady for some time and then it is off or maybe it can be like this. So, width means this is your full width of maximum. Okay. So, this width is uh, basically determining your, your uh, you know uh, how fast you will be able to uh, detect a, a reaction or not. So, that is width of your flash is very important. Now, earlier days flash is provided from the discharge lamp with duration in the region of tens of microseconds to several milliseconds. Okay. Like discharge lamp like you know you see like uh, in camera similar to that. Okay. But in most modern experiments the flash is provided by a uh, laser pulse. Okay. So, in our next lecture I will give you brief introduction of laser. So, laser is, is you know perhaps uh, maybe many of you have seen uh, that is uh, it is a laser pointer that is generally used uh, in in some demonstration that is when some somebody is talking. So, laser pointer is used to pointer I mean that is a that is uh, intense dot of light that is coming out of a pin like substance like 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 this and the laser light is coming out. Okay. Okay. So, you just point out where I mean, I mean the portion you want you can highlight or maybe in some laser show, show you can I mean uh, you, ca you, ca you have seen perhaps laser light show. So, where uh, uh, you know lots of you know different types of uh, patterns can be generated. So, this laser lasers can be pulsed or maybe it can be continuous wave I mean it stays for uh, with time or maybe it, it goes on and off like that that is called that is called a pulsed laser. So, typically duration of the of uh, you know a pulse laser could be nanosecond 10 to the power minus 9 second or it may be even less I mean maybe femtosecond okay, 10 to the power minus 15 second. So, so this laser pulse is very important. So, if you want to study very fast reactions then you may, you may need to use femtosecond pulses or maybe if it is moderately uh, fast you may need to use nanosecond pulses, but depending on the systems that you are using as the lasing substance your wavelength will be generated. Okay. It may be in IR region, it may be in visible, it may be in UV region depending on what type of material or what type of I mean lasing system you are using. Anyway, so, so for studying first reactions such as electron transfer reactions may be in photosynthesis. Okay laser pulses as short as few tens of frame to second okay, 10 to the power minus 15 seconds are used. Okay. So, that is why I mean you can choose using using different uh, you know duration differing in duration of your pulse you can choose you can choose your system I mean whether it is a fast reaction if it is a very fast reaction you use frame to second pulses if it is moderately fast then maybe accordingly you can you can choose your light I mean pulse width. So, the, f the, the, the I mean flash photolysis has the advantage that because reactants are produced from well mixed precursors there is no mixing time to reduce I mean there is no mixing time to reduce the time resolution of the technique and also since I mean the beam is generally falling on on the sample the reaction mixture at the at the middle. So, possibility of of reactions on the on, on the vessel wall okay, is is minimized. Okay, so, I will talk on this flash photolysis laser flash photolysis nowadays term is I mean laser flash, flash photolysis is the nowadays term. Okay. I mean previously 
I mean discharge lamps are used as the source of uh, flash that nowadays lasers are used. Okay, so, I will talk in a, in, a, in a more detail about this flash photolysis and what is laser in, in, a, in, a, in a later part of uh, I mean in another uh, class. There is another, uh, another uh, technique like another variation of flash photolysis which is also used for studying uh, the fast reactions. This is called your pulsed radiolysis. It is a variation of uh, variation of flash photolysis in which a short pulse of high energy electrons 10 to the power minus 9 to 10 to the power minus 6 second duration is that much is passed through the sample in order to initiate the reaction. For, a, a, for very fast processes the pump probe technique is often used in which pulsed lasers are employed both to initiate the reaction and also to detect the products by pulsed spectroscopic technique. The time separation between two pulses can be varied may be electronically or may be by using the optical delay line. Okay. So, in one case you pump with a, with a laser generating your excited state species or maybe reactive species like you know you have got your energy level diagram over here. Say this is your substance which is which is the reactant maybe in not in the ground state, but in the excited state. So, here say you pump like you pump water from you know uh, from the lower level to the upper level maybe maybe in a um, in a housing complex and then uh, it is it is st stored into your wa tank water tank this is your pump then suppose this excited species undergo some chemical reaction producing another species and say this species has got some absorption in another region. So, another you know say this is your species. So, another probe laser is used to probe this one. So, this higher state absorption. Okay. So, when you shine with another probe, another probe light. So, what it is doing is that this probe light, light is absorbed by this species. So, reduction in probe light intensity has been used to monitor the, the extent of reaction or how much this, this reactive species is generated or maybe time development of this species that is with time how this the concentration of this, this species, this reactive species or, or the, the product is changing with time. So, that is our goal I mean to study kinetics you need to find out you need to know the concentration of certain substance certain maybe it is reactant or maybe it is product in a way how it is changing with time. So, if you know this time do I mean time uh, uh, if you know the concentration as a function of time of that particular species you will be able to know the kinetics okay, the rate of reaction rate constants. There is another method which is called the relaxation method. So, uh, for studying fast reactions, if we allow a chemical system to come to equilibrium and then part of that equilibrium in some way, maybe suddenly you do something, maybe you uh, do a rapid temperature change, maybe rapidly you, you push the system external, that is, you put pressure, or maybe you change the volume very fast. Okay. So, in some way, in some way you change the equilibrium. Okay. The rate of relaxation to a new equilibrium position provides information about the forward and reverse rate constants for the reaction. And since a system at chemical equilibrium is already well mixed, the relaxation methods overcome the mixing problem associated with any flow methods. Okay. So, the system is in equilibrium initially, okay. say so, this is your equilibrium system and then what you do? You part up. So, system is now is now part up. So, it, it will try to find out another equilibrium state in this part up condition. 
Okay. So, so it, it, it will it will tend to relax to a new new equilibrium system. So you want to want to want to follow that. You you would like to follow that. Okay. So it does not suffer from the problems of mixing associated with the relaxation methods. I mean associated with the with the flow methods. Okay. So, uh, mixing problem is overcome in, in this relaxation method, okay. because flow methods have, uh, have real problem of mixing. So, uh, mathematically we can have this one that uh, we want to find out the time constant of reaction changing from one equilibrium state to another. Okay. So, A to B equilibrium at equilibrium state 1, you can write this rate of change of concentration with time, you can write this one and this is the this is correspondingly you can write this. A sudden change as for example, temperature is introduced at time t equal to 0. So, the success of this method is that you have to you have to you know change or you have to part up very fast. If your perturbation takes time, then it is it, it is uh, not very useful. So, it relies on the fact that how fast you can part up. So, the moment it is part up, then it will try to relax, the system will try to relax from the, the one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state with time and that will give you, that will guide you to find out the kinetics of the process. So, after a sudden change, you get new equilibrium this is equilibrium 1, this is equilibrium 2. So, this is equilibrium 1 corresponding expression, this is equilibrium 2 expression. Okay. The overall change of concentration of A between equilibrium 1 and equilibrium 2 due to, uh, I mean it takes time, this much of time, time t. If it is x 0, so x 0 is equal to this much. Okay. The rate of change of A during t equal to, so you, you can write this, this one t equal to 0 to t and integration and then taking this, taking this that t is equal to 1 by this, we have this one where tau is the is the time for relax, this is your relaxation time. So, from this, the from, from these, uh, these calculations and this mathematical manipulation and writing your equilibrium constants, new equilibrium constant like this, you can find out k f forward and k r, I mean forward rate for the I mean second equilibrium case and the backward rate for I mean backward rate uh, for your second equilibrium can be determined. So, this method relies on, this method relies on how fast, how fast you can part up. Okay. So, this is another useful method that is the relaxation method like other methods I talked about. This is also a very useful method, but it relies on the fact that that how fast you can you can part up your system. If you part up your system very slowly, then the system will also try to relax slowly, and so maybe in that case, it it will not be very useful, uh, you know, to follow your fast kinetics. Okay, so fastness. I mean to follow fastness, I mean fast process you have to part up very fast. Okay. So, we talked about flow methods. Okay. So, A B mixing chamber then it is flowing out. So, you are measure, I mean you are moving your detector from here to here since you know the flow rate. So, time difference, I mean how much time should the reactant, I mean mixed 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 reactant, uh, take while moving from this position to this position will give you the time difference. So from that you can find out the rate. That is, different location of a detector reflects different time. Stopped flow, you know these two are mixed very fast, and then this one, this one I mean stops the flow. Okay. And the moment it is stopped, flow 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 is stopped. You you keep on injecting, so it is coming out. 
this this uh, cylinder is coming out okay so that means what is happening that you can find out you know you can find out the concentration i mean in terms of uh, absorbance or maybe fluorescence of i mean concentration of your reactant or maybe your product you can find out and i also talked about this flash photolysis and there are still many methods okay now next thing is determination of concentration of reactants most kinetic measurement involve monitoring the concentration of reactants at different times as i told you that for slow reactions so maybe you you monitor concentration at say uh, i mean 2 minutes interval or maybe 5 minutes interval or maybe 10 minutes interval okay and then by by simple titration in some kinetic studies the conversions of reactants at constant uh, at constant time is measured okay say say after 2 minutes how much reactants are converted you measure that is or that can also be a technique many analytical techniques can be employed to detect concentration one is volumetric measurement as i told you that simple titr titrations are used to find out the concentration maybe maybe acid base titration maybe precipitation titration maybe conductometric titration maybe there there are there are several ways maybe ph metry with time you find out the ph how ph is changing with time that can also be a good way of looking into the concentration okay so this is the volumetric measurement another another thing uh, i mean other uh, things are instrumental measurements like uh, spectrophotometry using lambert beer's law you can find out the concentration that is i told you that using a suitable method you find out you know in in the in the during our first part of the lecture today i talked about by uh, by any suitable method i told you uh, that uh, the composition of reaction mixture is monitored at one or more positions along the tube by any suitable method so that i mean suitable method means your maybe spectrophotometry maybe spectroscopic method mass spectroscopy ir spectroscopy x ray photoelectron spectroscopy x r x ray diffractometry nmr etc nuclear magnetic resonance it may be chromatography gas chromatography liquid high performance liquid chromatography high pressure uh, then fplc fast protein liquid chromatography and so on okay ph conductivity as i told you maybe temperature maybe pressure maybe volume okay and specialized techniques as i just talked about can be useful in finding out in determining the concentration of reactants okay so these are and you know instrumental methods okay these are all instrumental methods by means of by using instrumental techniques you will be able to find out the concentration in case of spectrometry it relies on the fact that uh, out of your many reactants or maybe i mean suppose there are two reactants and say there are two products maybe out of out of this four species maybe one out of this four is absorbing at a, at a at a fixed wavelength maybe say at 500 nanometer so what you do you monitor absorbance at 500 nanometer as a function of time okay that will give you that will give you the concentration okay and even even if your detector uh, is very fast det detector then you can follow their concentration using absorbance spectroscopy also maybe also by fluorescence with time you you monitor the fluorescence if it is a very short period of time maybe say 1 nanosecond maybe 1 picosecond even in that case you can you can find out the i mean the the signal so from the intensity of your signal or from the height of your signal as a function of your uh, of time you can find out you can you, you can find out the rate constant of the decay or maybe rate con constant of the rise of the signal either way there is another method which is called the shock tubes the shock tube method provides a very i mean way of producing uh, highly reactive atom reactive 
atomic or molecular radical species through rapid dissociation of molecular precursor without the use of a discharge or laser pulse. In that case, you do not use, you do not use any laser pulse, maybe discharge or maybe discharge, you do not use anything. So, what you do, you just put some shock. The method is based on the fact that a very rapid increase in pressure, that is the shock, causes a rapid heating of a gas mixture. Generally, gaseous reactions are followed, I mean followed through shock tube method and uh, rapid heating of a gas mixture to a temperature of several thousand Kelvin. So, a huge increase in temperature and in many dissociation reactions, it has been found that this is, uh, these reactions are endothermic. So, at high temperature their equilibrium uh, uh, is shifted towards the products. A rapid increase in temperature therefore, leads to a rapid production of reactive species that is dissociation of products initiating the reaction of your interest. A shock tube essentially consists of two chambers separated by a diaphragm. One chamber contains the appropriate mixture of reactant and precursor and the shock wave propagates through the reaction mixture. The temperature rise can be controlled by varying the pressure and composition of the inert gas and composition of the reaction mixture after initiation is monitored in real time usually using spectroscopy. So, this is a spectroscopic detector. So, you know inert driver gas at high pressure it is your reaction mixture and there is a diaphragm. Okay. So, to initiate the, re the reaction the diaphragm is punctured and a shock wave is propagating through the reaction mixture. So, you have to puncture it, it is a very high pressure. Okay. So, if you puncture then it rapidly flows, I mean this high pressure, under high pressure this gas was there. Okay. So, rapidly it flows from here to here causing a huge increase in temperature, that is a shock. Okay. So, the shock tube approach is often used to study combustion reaction and uh, suitable precursors for such studies together with radical species obtained on dissociation using argon as shock gas includes. So, these are the, the typical example of shock, I mean example of reaction studied by shock method, shock tube method. Okay. So, you have got your high pressure inert gas. So, it is not going to hamper your reaction, I mean hamper in the sense that it, it is not going to react with your reaction mixture. So, it, it is a means to provide your shock. Okay. So, it is, it is a huge pressure. So, the moment it uh, this is released through the I mean by making a puncture. So, it will pass through and it is I mean uh, temperature is increased several thousand Kelvin rapid heating. Okay. So, rapid heating causes the reaction to get to be initiated and then the reaction is followed. I mean by the help of a detector. Okay, these are the examples. Now, the shock method does have some major difficulties. The fact that the rapid heating is not selective for a particular molecule and is likely, I mean suppose you have got more than one molecules in the mixture and you want to selectively heat one molecule, it is not possible. Okay, that is why uh, rapid heating is not selective for a particular molecule and is likely to lead to at least partial dissociation of all the species in the reactant chamber. This leads to a complicated mixture of reactive species and often large number of reactions occurring in addition to reaction under study, in addition to the reaction which is of our interest. Okay. So, Modeling the kinetics of such reaction is very challenging and the problem is that sometimes it is difficult, I mean, I mean uh, difficult to reproduce, reproduce the reaction. Suppose you, you do some reaction using in, in a shock, shock tube by puncturing your high pressure uh, argon or helium gas. The second time you want to do maybe, uh, you know, since it is, it is a mechanical way of puncturing you may not, you may not be able to reproduce the first one. So, that is why it is, it is a very challenging one and uh, modeling 
is sometimes very difficult because you cannot selectively hit, you cannot selectively hit out of many a particular molecule. Okay. So, let us, uh, let us look into uh, various, uh, various uh, techniques, although uh, we are, we are interested, now we are, we are, we are focusing on to the fast reactions, but anyway. So, let us have a look into various methods, conventional method. Uh, mix reactants together in a batch reactor measure concentration versus time. So, it is you know it is uh, I mean time required is 10 seconds or more it, it may take uh, you know more time 10 seconds or more. For stopped flow set of continuous flow uh, systems where reactants are fed into the reactor and flown out again quick, quickly that there is negligible reaction stop the flow so that the reaction can react I mean reactants can react and measure the conversion versus time. So, in that case it is 10 to the power minus 1 second or more. Okay. Temperature jump method, temperature jump method is a mixed reactant at such a low temperature that the reaction rate is negligible. Okay. Use carbon dioxide laser to suddenly heat the reactants and measure concentration versus time. Okay. So, in that case you get uh, 10 to the power minus 6 second, I mean in that case your time required is 10 to the power minus 6 second or more, okay. that is the limit 10 to the power minus 6. Shock tube it takes it, it takes about 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 5 second and in that case put 10 to the power minus 1 atom uh, atmospheric pressure of 1 reactant and 10 atmospheric helium, helium on the other side of the diaphragm. Okay. and put uh, maybe 10 to the minus 3 atmospheric pressure to other reactant on the other side of the diaphragm, suddenly break the diaphragm, so that the gas flows from high pressure side to the low pressure side, okay. a huge heating and uh, measure the reactant concentration versus time. Flash photolysis, okay. it is from 10 to the minus 9 nanosecond to you know 10 to the minus 1 second, sub second. So, put reactant into vessel under uh, under conditions where reaction is negligible. Okay. Say it is it is it is a say uh, consider a reaction which does not generally occur in the ground state, maybe in the excited state. I mean when out of uh, out of two uh, reactants maybe one is excited and then it does the reaction. In that case flat flash photolysis is useful maybe. So, so, a pulse laser in that case a pulsed laser or flash lamp is used to initiate the reaction okay, and measure the react, reactant concentration or maybe the product concentration as well. In, in all the cases as I told you that measure reactant concentration maybe you can measure reactant concentration or maybe product concentration depending on your choice or maybe depending on uh, depending on the fact that which one is easier to do easier to do whether it is easy or whether it is not easy. NMR uh, initiate uh, the change uh, you know with a magnetic pulse and measure the decay of spins with NMR. Okay, that will give you the idea I mean 10 to the minus 2 10 to, to, to I mean 10 to the minus 2 seconds to 10 to the minus 9 seconds. Okay. So, and the conventional flow system continuously fed uh, reactants into a reactor and measure the steady state reaction rate. And it is, it is again it is the time constants are 10 to the power minus 3 seconds or more. Molecular beam, direct beams of reactants towards each other I mean like that. See we have got a beam of molecules, so, it, one is doing this way, another is going this way. So, there is a, there, there is a interaction at this point. Okay. So, reaction is happening at this point. So, and you, you can study how much of reaction is taking place maybe by, by using a suitable detector over here. 
ok. Again here the time constraints are like 10 to the power minus 13 to 10 to the power minus I mean 13 to 10 to the power minus 9 second ok. So, so I mean we, we have now seen we have now seen uh, you know the time constraints and various you know also the various uh, base basics of various uh, techniques to to follow mainly the fast reactions okay so uh, it looks like that uh, in some cases it looks like that in some cases this uh, flow techniques are not useful because of the slowness I mean because of the fastness of the process. In some cases maybe flash photolysis could be useful, not always flash photolysis is useful. If excited rea state reaction is taking place, maybe say excited state intramolecular proton transfer, maybe excited state hydrogen atom transfer. In that case these uh, light induced detection processes or light induced uh, processes like flash photolysis are very useful. Okay. So, so uh, let us again come back to what we have we have learnt today. So, we started with uh, I mean importance of chemical kinetics in our life and why uh, do we need to study chemical kinetics because we want to know the you know how uh, you know some reactants are depleted maybe how we are growing in height okay so so th th there must be you know definitive uh, chemical uh, chemical process that ha that is happening i mean the process is going on with time okay so it must have some kinetics now in, in case of conventional process, I mean conventional processes for studying reactions where the reaction is not very fast, you can use conventional techniques like say titration, but for studying fast reactions you have to you have to adapt a method, I mean adapt ways by which you can you can compete with the fastness of the process. Okay. Like whenever you want to catch a train which is which has just started to you know started to move, what you have to do? You have to you have to run okay. and the moment your speed is uh, I mean close to your the, the speed of the train then you can get into it otherwise it is difficult. So, like that your method should compete with the with, with the with the speed of the reaction. I mean if your method is very slow then uh, during your measurement you may miss many things the details of the process may be missed but if you if you can if if you can follow if you can if you can detect very fast then maybe details of of the processes can be can be uh, can be achieved okay so one uh, method was you know uh, like i talked about is the flow technique then it is the modified version is the stopped flow technique then he talked about I mean I mean given just idea about this uh, flash photolysis another version was the pulsed radiolysis. Relaxation method is also a very very important uh, thing that is the, it, it relies on the fact that that you have to you have to part of the system that is an equilibrium system such that a new equilibrium is established. So, during establishment of new equilibrium you you, you can follow how fast or how slow it is equilibrated to a new new description okay and uh, we have compared and another method was a shock method preferably for gaseous reaction it is it is used and uh, we have compared various methods and they are you know time constraints okay so in the next uh, lecture we will talk about this uh, did, uh, in in a in a little detail of the of the technique which is called the flash photolysis and also the laser flash photolysis and there we'll have uh, you know chance to know a little about you know uh, 
flash photolysis, I mean little about flash photolysis, laser flash photolysis and what is laser. Okay. And what is the difference uh, between a laser and a laser light or laser source with uh, you know the simple light. So that will uh, all, all uh, we will try to cover in the in the next lecture. So till then have nice time, thank you.